about the Kia Seltos EX Premium. This is a 2021 model year vehicle, and it is, in my opinion, well, it is one of my favorite Kias, and this trim in, in specific is one of my favorite Kias. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, as you know, there's a couple commenters on here. They just said, hey, remember your Teddy, and I did need to get him, and I forgot him already, so we'll hopefully get him in here later today. Uh, that's gonna make a lot more sense to you if you're not regulars with us in just a few seconds. All right, if you wanna watch the content of this video, uh, please feel free to skip ahead to the three minute mark. What we're gonna do in the next little while is allow our audience to build. We're gonna talk about some news, some other things like that. And uh, at the three minute mark, we're gonna allow the audience to jump in and we'll get to the content. So feel free to skip ahead. If you don't skip ahead, you can stick around for some fun. A little more casual conversation, shall we say. So here we go. If you want to watch our live videos and you're not on YouTube, sometimes these get embedded very often. Very often you just find them on YouTube. So you're going to search for Brantford Kia at exactly two o'clock. You're going to have to memorize that, I guess. Hit the refresh button at uh, exactly two o'clock and you will see the live video tab right there. If we click the live videos right there, you will launch into our live video. Today we're going to watch an ad for a Buick Cadillac. John Bear. Oh, we've watched them yesterday as well. All right. So let's just get back and we're gonna skip the ads. All right, some people are saying they're having trouble loading. I don't know what to say. So, is there anybody else having trouble hearing me, having trouble seeing me? It seems like it's working for me, so uh, let me know if it's not working. And uh, we have one person that's having some issue with it, but I think it seems to be working for me. So, you guys can tell me. All right, we're gonna focus on KSL to EZBX Premium, great, yes, this is gonna be fun. All right, let's continue to go with news. Uh, if anybody's having trouble hearing me, just uh, let me know. We're good, you can hear me, everything's good? It's working out, perfect, all right. Here you go, what about the SX Turbo? Great question, we'll talk about why I didn't choose it as one of my favorite. Uh, we'll go through that in a second. So let's just first start with the Kia news. Uh, as you go, again, we've covered this a bunch of times this week. Kia Stinger, next week. Kia EV6, worldwide inter, uh, in, uh, introduction, also next week. We're gonna cover both of those. Uh, we also have the Stinger arriving. Now I'm starting to wonder if we might get the Kia Stinger before we see the Kia Carnival. So I'm really prepared to do the Carnival stuff, uh, but if the Stinger shows up first, uh, that works for me too. I'm totally happy with that. So just be prepared. That's what we think is coming, but we'll find out more as we know. And uh, you guys, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of what about comments about uh, why certain cars aren't my favorite. This is a video for you. You can find out why this is my favorite uh, or one of my favorite. And you can find out if that fits what you would call your favorite as well. Uh, some of my features, some of the features I like and don't like on this car uh, are in other cars. So we'll talk about that. All right, we're already 15 seconds away from the three minute mark. So we're gonna flip back around here in just one second. I just wanna make sure I have everything I need here, except for my teddy bear. Wanna do a test? Oh no, can't test Pat. Pat's already uh, in a meeting. So we'll have to get grab, grab my teddy bear in a minute um, because I forgot again. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We're at the three minute mark. So we're gonna go right into the content. So those of you just joining us for the very first time, I do a live video every single weekday at two o'clock Eastern time. And uh, we cover things really in depth. So we're gonna spend about a half an hour here today going through this car in depth. And uh, I'm gonna be quite honest, I often compare cars but we were gonna keep this beautiful Telluride inside because it's delivering right after I'm done my video and uh, we wanted to keep it in perfect condition. There's a chance of rain today. So we're gonna talk about just one vehicle, but you're gonna see this vehicle completely in depth. And again, I know a lot about Kias. This is one of my favorites. So what does it take to be one of my favorite Kias? Well, I think first of all, it has to be, have good value. It has to be relatively affordable. Now I get some people aren't gonna have the same definition of, of affordable as I do. Uh, however, you know, a top end Sorento, a Telluride, a Kia Stinger, those are outside some people's affordability thing. A lot of people's affordability thing potentially. Uh, the Seltos is right there in that, in what I call affordability area. Uh, this particular trim adds technology. I really want a vehicle that has good technology, not just because I'm kind of a tech nerd, but also because I like a vehicle that five years down the road has some of the equipment that still gives you that wow factor. It just kind of feels special. So this vehicle has some of that. We're gonna show you some of that. And somebody said, why not the turbo? And that's a great question. I'm gonna address that right off the top. I like the turbo model. The turbo model has basically the same content as this. Yesterday, we talked about the Kia Forte 5. It has the same turbo engine. And the reason I like the Kia Forte 5 GT with that turbo engine is because that adds a lot of character through that car. Um, and in that car, that's basically the feature of that car. That's what makes it so fun. It's the kind of car, the Forte 5 GT, that when you buy it five years down the road from now, you're gonna be happy because it just puts a smile on your face. With this car, the turbo engine gives you a little bit more speed, 
but not any more real performance, if you know what I mean. So we'll explain that a little bit in a second. This car has all the power I need for what I intend to do with it. I'm not planning to go race people with this car. This is an everyday car that I'm gonna use for everyday things, and we'll talk about why it fits with my life as we go through. First of all, let's just take a look here, and we'll look at where it is in the lineup. And we'll show you right here. While I'm just scrolling down here, I'm on the wrong page, guys. Sorry about that. Do me a favor, hit that like button. We're gonna to try to get to about 40 likes today. Uh, I gotta walk over to my light in a second, but we'll do that in a second. All right, so the Kia Seltos comes in a front-wheel drive model, but most of them are all-wheel drive. It starts at 23,095, that's MSRP, 25,095, which is the LX all-wheel drive. Basically, that adds all-wheel drive, fancier wheels, but same basic car. Uh, then you get into the one we looked at yesterday when we compared it to the Kia Forte 5 GT, um, and you had basically the same price point as that car. You get the EX model. This is our volume model. It's got the sunroof, forward collision avoidance assist, lane follow assist, uh, smart key and push button start, and that uh, artificial leather that I prefer over real leather. And now I'm one step above that to the EX Premium. There's an SX above that. The reason I like the EX Premium is it adds a few features that I think I would like. I really like the 10 and a quarter inch screen. I really like the LED headlights, UVO intelligence, and wireless cell phone chargers are all features that I think have great value. And for me, they make it worth it to step up to this car. Give me a second here. The Telluride is blocking my motion sensor, so I'm going to turn the lights on because they turn off if they don't sense motion. And there we go. Lights are on again. So we're going to start by going through this car. We're going to go driver's seat. We're going to go back seat. We're going to go trunk. I'm going to show you some technology. I want to talk about features. Actually, before we go inside, let's just start with the outside. One of the reasons I like this over the turbo model is I'm a pretty outdoorsy kind of guy. Every single... Um, Every single Seltos, I almost said Telluride, every single Seltos has the cross rails there. Now, if you are a kayaker, if you are a camper that takes roof boxes up top or if you want to put anything on the roof, you can get roof racks on any car that clip around here. That's not a problem. Uh, I just prefer the security of having them properly mounted to roof rails that are really, really solid. And these roof rails are kind of cool because I can put my hand up here and put my foot right there on the tire. So again, foot on the tire, hand up there and I can pull myself up to stand and reach things that are tied up top, which is kind of a handy thing with that rear handle kind of built in there. Uh, but I do like that roof rail. And the other thing, when we talk about not a turbo model, this EX Premium has a one inch smaller wheel. So this diameter of the whole tire and wheel combination is very similar, if not the exact same. But the wheel itself is one inch smaller, which gives you more sidewall. A lot of people like the look on a sportier car of less sidewall, more, um, wheel but this fits me exactly because a little bit more sidewall allows me to go a little bit more off-road and when i go not that i'm going really really far off-road but sometimes i go to these kayak launch sites that are not the best uh roads and having a little bit extra um sidewall can help uh, avoid a pinch flat or something like that so that's a feature for me that i really quite like um, and you don't get that on the turbo model turbo model again a little bit more speed a little bit more road oriented now that this is not road road oriented so we're gonna take a look here, uh, outside the car, first of all, inside there is some dirt and dust on this car. That's because this car got the Peter clean up. It is not a properly detailed vehicle. Inside you do have powered seats. I like powered seats. I really like the lumbar adjustment. Uh, makes it really comfortable for me. The seats in this car are very good sized. A lot of this uh, class of R uh, has a little bit, what we call seven eighth size seats. So they shrink down the seat a little bit, and then they can give themselves better headroom and legroom and all sorts of numbers, but you're not really as comfortable. And that's another thing that matters to me when we talk about my favorite vehicles. It has to be very good in the class, if not a class leading vehicle. So this car is really class leading in a lot of ways. I'm gonna jump in here for a second. All right. One thing I like about this, the EX Premium model is the first, oh, we forgot the key. We always forget the key. So while we forget the key, let me just show you what I pulled the key out for in the first place. This key is a redesigned key by Kia. And what it has is, uh, instead of putting buttons on here, used to have buttons across there, all the buttons are here, which is kind of a nice space to have that. Now you do have the remote start. And what's cool about the remote start, and this is the reason I pulled this key out of the car, is you can hold that remote start. But if I was in my garage and I accidentally hit that button, it would, the car is capable of sensing some of the emissions that are created by a gasoline vehicle. And if it's in a garage, it'll say, hey, wait a minute, the emissions are getting high in this room and it'll turn itself off, which is a really cool feature um, that comes with a remote start. So I like that feature. People don't mention it very often and I think it's a smart feature. I have an electric car that I always preheat in the middle of the winter in my garage. Uh, but if you accidentally did it with your gas car, uh, it would be a problem. 
So one of the things I really like about this is this is very Telluride inspired. Like I said, I have a Telluride in the bay with us today. Uh, you have the uh, gauges right over here and same thing in the Telluride. And then you have this display screen in the center and this display screen, it's gonna be hard to film on camera, but it is crystal clear. It is very, very clear. All of the, um, the you know, everything you see in there, there's very fine pixels. So it's very easy to see. And uh, I really quite like the ability to just um, see everything you need to see in here. We're gonna ignore fuel efficiency numbers because uh, this car has been idling a little bit like every other dealership car. You can get your navigation through here. You can see obviously your gears are over there, um, your gear choice. Uh, system off, let's turn that system on. Let's turn the lane keep system on. So we've got lane keep assist that can be labeled very clearly while you're driving. Uh, driver attention warning. Uh, this is your all wheel drive. And we're gonna talk about all wheel drive in this car as well, because this all wheel drive system is very much class leading. And I think people are afraid to talk about their all wheel drive systems uh, compared to ours because ours is very, very good. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. That gives you a bar graph to show you where the power is going in your car while you're driving. And tire pressure monitors are in here as well. And then of course you got another uh, back to the beginning screen that we had. So what I like about this is you always have a speedometer and some people have complained that they think that number is small. Um, it's very legible to me in person. And um, you know, I think I, sometimes I get used to a digital speedometer. So even though there's the gauge here, it actually that's a perfect example. See how when I put my finger there, it kind of fuzzes out. When you're driving, your eyes are focused over here and I use the gauge to just get a general sense of where I am. So when it's all fuzzed out in your eyes, you can see if it's up here, I'm going around hundred, but I like to look at the digital speedometer when I see something like radar or school zone, am I going exactly the speed limit I wanna be going at? And the digital speedometer is just helpful for that. So I like that that, 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 that that is in there. Scrolling across over here, this is the 10 and a quarter inch screen. Now there is some updated software you can get in this car. A lot of people prefer this software. It just depends on what you wanna do. Um, I left it on the Hip Hop Nation station, even though that's probably not my first choice. I'm not cool hip hop ish like that. Uh, but I think you can see, usually this is a lighter color. It's just when we're in the video bay here, the car thinks we're outside at night and it dims it down, which is perfectly fine. When you go through a tunnel or something like that, it won't uh, blare bright uh, light on you. But you can see the hip hop nation, you've got good graphics in here as well, including nice color. And I think a lot of um, car manufacturers, they kind of glaze over some of this stuff. Uh, it's not really nice color. And you've got uh, Weather over here as well, which is now available. Uh, if I was outside, no signal because again, I'm inside the video bay. But you've got good uh, things here and you can customize these displays as well. One thing I really like as well in the Seltos, and again, this is not in the Telluride that's in the bay, even though Telluride is a much more expensive vehicle, you can change the users here. So you can go driver one, driver two, or guest. And what that does is allows you to customize all these things. So if you share a car with someone and you have completely different music tastes, let's say, Hip Hop Nation is maybe their music taste and you like something else. Uh, you can have all of their radio presets in here and you can have all these widgets the way you want. Um, so you can do a lot of different things here. And like I said, if you don't want if your nav here, you maybe want your weather here or your radio here or whatever you want, you can customize a lot of those things uh, per driver. And I think that's a, a really good feature there. Coming down here, I'm a big fan of automatic climate control. Ignore the glare. The glare is just the angle I'm filming at and the single eye of the camera. Once you have two eyes looking at this, there is some reflection here, but none of this is hard to see for me. So you have to kind of see it in person to believe me, but um, I wouldn't lie to you. Anyway, so 21 degrees is what it's set for. And you can see it automatically puts the air where I need it. And you can say it's, see it says high there, even though it's very barely blowing at all. Uh, what's cool is you can set how high or how much air comes through there. So if I have it on low like it is right now, it says low, uh, it'll take a little bit longer to reach the 21 degrees, whether it needs heat or air conditioning, but it'll be a little quieter through here. So just kind of a neat little custom function there uh, for that. I'm gonna turn it off right now so we can keep the battery of this car nice and good for whoever might need it next. Coming down here, you do gain the wireless charge pad in this car. You don't have it on any lower trim level of the Seltos, um, which is a shame because this is a feature that I didn't really see the value of until I started, until I got my first wireless chargeable phone. Uh, this is the kind of thing where if you're hopping in your car, five minutes charge here, 10 minutes charge there, 15 minutes charge there, and uh, you get really good, um, you get your phone that charges really well. And there is a vent in the back there. I can't really film it right now. Eh, we'll see if I can get film it. Let's see if I can get it down there. I don't think I can. I got a weird little camera mount here that, nope, I can't get it. But there is a vent back there and that is kind of nice. Ooh, okay, come on camera. Uh, it's kind of nice because it keeps the phone from getting too, too hot. 
And then you also have two USB ports here and a 12 volt port. Now, I don't think I need a 12 volt port, but I think it's glad to keep it in here because a lot of people do have 12 volt ports or various things. Um, the USB port right here gives you Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So what I like about that is I like factory navigation. It works fine for what I need. Um, turn on the flashlight. Oh yeah, that would have worked on my phone. But um, yeah, you know. Anyways, I like the factory navigation. I think it works well. Some people really prefer Google Maps. Now, I'll give you a few reasons why I prefer Google Maps or Apple Maps. Google Maps with me, if I look an address up on my computer, uh, signed into my Google account, and I do that in my office, when I get to the car, if I hook up Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it's going to suggest that destination already in my Maps app, uh, which I kind of like. I've already been there. I know where I'm going, and I know the route it, that Google's going to take me on. So if I'm in my office and it says it's going to take 42 minutes to get there, um, it's the same route on Google Maps. However, sometimes you don't always want to go to Google Maps. You just want to talk to the car. You can talk to the car. This navigation works pretty well. There is a little bit of a learning curve to this for some people. Once you know it, it's very, very, very simple. Uh, but of course, if you just have an iPhone or an Android phone and you're used to using Google Maps, you can use both of those. So that's a big advantage there. And you have up-to-date routing and information, that kind of thing. So that's a big thing I like. We're just going to show you the backup camera while we're here because I have the car. Uh, clear, clear, clear backup camera. It's really hard to show how clear, but you can see it's also very wide. Um, if you see the angle when I look out the door here, I can see all the way to that door way over there. Um, and even in my backup camera, this is probably a good example too. You can't see that door when I look out the window, but the backup camera, if we just come back to here, can see that door. So not only do you have that great wide view of the backup camera, you also have what's called rear cross traffic alert. This is a safety feature that I'm a big fan of. Uh, it will warn you if it sees vehicles coming this way that you can't possibly see from the driver's seat or the other way, it'll give you a visual and audible warning. So sound and visible, visible warning uh, to show you what's coming there. So really great backup camera in this uh, car. Uh, the outside light in this room turned off again because I haven't been outside, so we're going to turn on these lights. You can turn on these lights with the button, like that, or you can do this right here and tap that glass or the rim of this alone, and that will turn on the light. So not enough light to really film, but actually, let's just turn that off. We'll turn all these on. We'll get a little extra light down here. Drive modes in this car, you've got good ones. You've got smart, sport, and normal. That's what I think you need. I don't know if I saw that two, three, so you can change that around, and I'll show you in the dash here what happens when I switch. Smart, sport, see those gauges change, kind of cool, and normal. So I like to keep it in the smart mode. Basically what that does is it helps you figure out, um, if you're driving economically anyways, the car is gonna work with you to get fantastic fuel efficiency. If you get into the throttle a little bit, it'll switch it into the normal or smart mode automatically, and the car just seems to react. It seems to know what you want. So if you want a car that feels punchy, it'll feel punchy. If you want to right away switch back to economy. And that's the way I drive. I drive economically through town, but every now and then I want to get on it just for a second. Uh, so that's smart mode. The car just knows what I'm going to do. If you put it in sport mode, it's always pretty punchy. You put it in normal mode, it kind of balances things out, but never really goes in that sport mode. No rear sensors showing up on the rear view. Yeah, no rear sensors on this car. Something like the Nero, the sports, uh, sorry, it's Nero and the, I guess the high-end Sportage has it and the um, cell, or Telluride has it, uh, but no parking sensors. Now that to me isn't a huge issue. Visibility is pretty good and you're not quite as tall as some of the other cars. Um, but yeah, people like sensors. This one does not have that. Not a huge thing for me. Coming down here, Another reason to switch to this model as opposed to the um, other models, you have the rump roasters, which are a necessity for me, and they're in, I think, every Celtos. Yes, they are. Uh, what you also get is seat ventilation. So I don't have a great name for that that I can use on camera. Sorry, but, oh, I'm having trouble. Siri was talking to me there. Uh, but the ventilated seats are pretty nice. They take not just the heat out of the seat, but they actually cool you down. So really nice feature right there. You only get this on this EX Premium model. And again, I've always said in the past, I'm not a huge fan of leather. This is an artificial leather, which doesn't get as hot as regular leather. Um, it is very nice to the touch. It's soft, but still grippy. So I kind of like it. It feels durable, but still soft. Uh, but anything with non-cloth seats, uh, having ventilation is nice because it keeps you from sweating. So that's kind of nice. So uh, yeah, they work great. We have some people here talking about how great they work. The, the rump icers, rump roasters and rump icers. I don't know if I can say icers only because somebody will get mad at me because it doesn't actually have air conditioning properties in that. It just moves the air conditioning in the car through the seat, but it de certainly does that. Heated steering wheel is also kind of a must have thing now. It's funny because um, one of the vehicles I drive is a Kia Soul EV, has a heated steering wheel. Everything I drive at work in the winter has a heated steering wheel. If I have to take a company car, I only take one with a heated steering wheel. My other vehicle, 
does not have a heated steering wheel and it stinks. Once you get used to having a uh, heated steering wheel, it's no fun to go without. So you get that in this. The other thing that's really nice to have on this car, I'm gonna probably turn these lights off for a second. Let me turn them off. Uvo Intelligence. It is a series of three buttons. Um, you know, you can call a tow truck, you can get some navigation, you can call for help. What it really is, is an app. We did a Kia class video yesterday on uh, the one of the features on not this car, but another car. Uh, but that app is really good. You can remote start your car, lock your car, even just check if your car's locked. It's in your driveway or, you know, you left it somewhere in the mall. Did I lock the car? You can check if it's locked and then remote lock it. A lot of cool things there, remote start it, that kind of thing. Heated steering wheels are a necessity in areas with colder weather. Yes. Uh, people that, uh, if you've never had a heated steering wheel, you will love it. Coming back over here, we're going to talk about some safety features. We are going to take your questions in a second here, guys. So if you have any questions, start asking them now. Uh, somebody says, is Uvo like OnStar? I'm not probably supposed to say that but there are a lot of similarities. Yes, very much some similarities there. Uh, Uvo, of course, is free for three years right now. OnStar, not so much. Okay, so coming in here, you've got your cruise control. It's a smart cruise control. If you've never driven smart cruise control, uh, basically, you know what cruise control is. It holds your speed. Well, now what cruise control is going to do is it's going to keep the distance between you and the car in front of you. Uh, so if a car comes out and you're going 100 kilometers an hour and they're going 90, the car will just easily back off. The car clears and the car will speed up. What's cool about this is it works in stop and go traffic. You would never use cruise control and stop and go traffic, but you will almost always use smart cruise control and stop and go traffic because it can bring the car to a complete stop, creep forward again, complete stop, creep forward, goes 12 kilometers an hour, go 15 kilometers an hour, go 50 kilometers an hour, back down to 10 kilometers an hour. Smart cruise control is great for that. It takes all the stress out of driving in, um, in uh, stop and go traffic. And it's also great on a long trip because you're not always adjusting up and down to the traffic. It just does it for you. Now that of course adjusts braking and acceleration for you. This little button beside you, you've heard of lane keep assist. This is lane follow assist. So let's just talk really briefly about what that does and why I like it. Lane keep assist, sees the lane markers, keeps you centered in the lane above 60 kilometers an hour. Lane follow assist, doesn't need to see all lane markers. So if it only sees, let's say the driver's side, but not the passenger side um, lane marker, it can still figure out roughly where the lane is, especially on a country road where there's gravel and other stuff. It'll figure out where the lane is and it can still keep you centered. By that, I mean, it actively steers you. If you think of about a Tesla autopilot, why everybody's so excited about Tesla autopilot, Tesla's full self-drive is not full self-driving. Tesla's autopilot is not really an autopilot, but it does capably steer the car. And with a smart cruise control, it can brake the car and accelerate the car. Um, brake as in B-R-E-A, no, B-R-E, no. Brake, B-R-A-K-E, I know how to spell. Uh, so it will slow down the car and accelerate the car. Uh, spelling is not my strong point today. And I, my grade six teacher would be disappointed. I had 100% in grade six spelling. You'd never know it. All right, so what lane follow assist does, that's what this button does here. You can turn it on and off. It allows that steering ability of the car, the ability to keep it centered in the lane, even around bends and stuff. It'll allow that to stay active even below 60 kilometers an hour. It'll allow it to stay active even if it doesn't see all the lane markers all the time. It can use the vehicle in front and a number of other features that your eyes also use to keep a lane marker. And it works really, really, really well. So so I like that feature. You still are supposed to keep your hands on the wheel, just like in Tesla's autopilot, but it works really well. Uh, other things you have, controversial, I know, it's got a vehicle that can turn itself off at stoplights. Um, when I mean off, turn the engine off at stoplights. I get it, a lot of you guys hate this feature. You've had experiences with it in other brands. I like it, it just works well. Somebody asked a great question yesterday. Does it turn itself off if you've got the heat pumped or the air conditioning pumped? No, it doesn't. It doesn't turn itself off. If you need that heat or if you need the engine running, it'll leave it running. But if you come to a stop uh, and you don't need the engine running for any reason, the car just turns itself off. The second you release that brake pedal, it's instantly started. It's not like starting the car, cranking it over. It instantly starts and is ready to go. It's a little bit different technology. It doesn't wear your start out. It's built to do this. It works really well and it saves you a little bit of fuel. So that's kind of a good thing for me. All right, we're gonna hop out. We're gonna take your questions. We're gonna go through the rest of this car. Um, there's a lot more technology to show you. So if there's something I didn't mention, feel free to ask about it. I'm just going to walk this way so I can turn on the room light again. There we go. And then I'm going to take your questions and we will keep going around this car. I want to show you lighting, rear seat and trunk space. I don't think anybody I have out there is watching right now, so they can't bring me my teddy bear, but if they are, teddy bear would be great. Yeah. One thing we got 24 people on. That's not a ton of people, but we only got 12 likes. So if we're going to get to 40, there's 25 people on now. We're gonna have about 100 to 200 people easily on this. Hey, there's Garth. Oh, hold on. There's Garth. Anyway, so Garth, uh, what would you do? Would you give me a like if you were watching on YouTube right now? I'd give you, uh, yeah, but I'd also create two fake accounts and give you two more likes. See, Garth would fake, create two fake accounts and give me two more likes. So if you guys could do that, that works too. Um, anyways, Garth's gotta go outside. 
So yeah, if you have questions, ask them right now. Do me a favor, hit that like button. It just really helps me out. We're trying to get the 40 likes every live video. Uh, more if we can, but we're only going to shoot for 40 today. So we'll have 100 to 200 people on. You guys can get me there. Okay, I'm just going through questions. Does the car turn the heat and heated steering wheel on with the remote start? Uh, with the remote start, it does not. However, with the uh, Uvo Intelligence, at least the steering wheel, I'll have to check my specs on which car, uh, but some of those features can be activated in Uvo Intelligence. Uh, so when you start with your phone, um, it, can, uh, it can turn some of those features on. Great question. I don't think it turns them on with the remote start itself because that could be used in the summer or winter. Um, there's a lot of stuff I can show you in the technology in this car, so I could do that as well. Um, da, 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 da. I don't think there's a ton of questions and that's okay. We'll keep moving through. Legit taking notes on trying this all on my Seltos. All right, oh, we'll just show you all kinds of stuff. One day we'll go through the technology on the Seltos. All right, so what I wanna show you next is, um, actually we'll do lighting now and then we're gonna go rear seat and trunk space. The reason I wanna show you lighting is one of the reasons I would upgrade to this model if, you know, if it's financially feasible. I'm not telling you to buy a car that you can't afford, um, but this is one of my favorite models because it has these LED headlights out front that I don't think I turned on yet. Nope, I didn't. One more click. There we go. So out here you have these cool little um, LED marker lights. Now they may start to flicker at some point through this video uh, just because they interact with the camera and they flicker. So you've got them kind of coming around there. They continue on through into the front of the dash, which is pretty cool. But the LED headlights to me, if you can spring for them, are well worth it. They are very, very bright as you can see. And then you've also got the LED fog lights down here, which are also very, very bright. And we need a nighttime video so we can see the lights. Yeah, you know what? I've promised a nighttime video for a while and I haven't done it, so I will get that for you. This coloring is off when I film it, but I can tell you that this is a very, very bright white light. And the benefit of all of this um, with the LED lights is the color is very natural to daytime. So you can very quickly identify, even in your peripheral vision, what something is because it looks like it would in the daytime. So very bright, they're instant on. Uh, they have a nice sharp cutoff, which is very, very good. And um, I like that. And then you also have LED lights in the rear. Again, that instant on ability. Uh, and we talked about yesterday, sort of the stepped depth to some of these. Um, it's just really cool design to the lighting. One other thing I'll turn it on is just the signal light for one second because you do upgrade to front LED signals. You've got these ones on the mirrors, of course. And then down here, you've got the instant on LED signal lights, which look pretty cool. Normally the signal lights are up here and headlights are down here in the lower trim levels, but those are LED signals. So we said heads up display, does it come with one? It does on the SX model, but we don't have it on this model. For me, again, the turbo, moving to the turbo model, having a little bit less sidewall, I don't need more power. Um, so that's fine for me. That's why this one's more my favorite instead of that one. And same thing with the heads-up display. I like heads-up display in the windshield. This one's got one on the screen in front or a little screen in front, uh, which works fine. I just don't need it or don't, you know, it's just one of those things that's nice to have, but not a crucial thing to me personally. Let me just turn the signal back off. We're going to turn the car back off for a minute. Headlights off. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you rear seat space. I just have the seat set up for myself. I'm six feet tall. And the benefit of this car is you have a lot of space for the size. Something like a Hyundai Kona is supposed to compete with this. Uh, it probably does in a class. They both have all-wheel drive. They're both kind of similar. But you gain a lot more rear seat space in this car. It's an advantage to the Seltos here. One thing I want to show you as well, this trim level has rump roasters, which I just turned the car off. The rump roasters for the rear seats as well. Just the seat bottoms for these, but that's plenty uh, to keep you certainly comfortable. Uh, we never used to have seat bottoms and backs in some of our cars. It was always seat bottom in the back in the day. But now you get it in the rear seats here as well. So we're gonna jump in here. I should probably just flip you around. Here we go. You can see how easily I can get into this car. It's got good headroom. It's got, um, you know, comfortable. I'm six feet tall. And the big thing is I'm sitting behind myself. So you've got seats flat on the floor. You've got good knee room. Actually, this seat is too far back. I can tell because uh, sometimes I move them back to film, but I can tell because I usually have more, more room. So again, I'm six feet tall. That seat is farther back than even I need it. So if you're sitting behind a 6'2 person, maybe even taller than that, uh, you've got all the room you need uh, for legroom, headroom. And there is one level of recline on this seat if I wanted it. Rump roasters in the back. You got it. Somebody says, lovely. <laughs> all right. So we've got uh, vents back here as well. You do have a USB port down there and a place to put your phone, a pocket over there. And there are, is an armrest in the center with a cup holder. So you can fit five people in here. Four are going to be really comfortable for a long trip. Uh, the fifth person will be fine, uh, but you know, nobody wants to be the middle person. Trunk space. We're going to show the trunk space. One thing I want to show, 
This is the model I wanna show this one feature for. So we've talked about this floor that lowers. You can see the EX Premium adds this panel. Some of the lower trim levels don't have it. The EX doesn't have it. So that panel, of course, closes with the trunk. It sits level to here. And some people have asked me, is it really worth it to lower this floor down? Because they know you can lower the floor down. So let me show you how that's done. If we lower the floor down like this, it drops, I would say maybe six inches or so. It's hard to say exactly. Uh, I don't, uh, I grew up with a metric system, so I'm allowed to quote anything in inches and be wrong. Maybe it's not quite six inches. Let's call it four inches or so. I don't know. Point is, um, it's, uh, it does give you extra space. Now in a normal Seltos, it really doesn't matter that much because you don't have this panel there. However, with this one, with that panel shut, you can still fit a little bit extra airport luggage, a little bit extra bigger stuff in here. Uh, so we're gonna go grab my teddy bear for a quick second. He's just around the corner here. We're gonna keep filming here. All right, nobody's there. Brent's there, but we're fine. Hey, Brent, we're live on the internet. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just forgot my teddy bear. All right, we're gonna keep the customers off the uh, thing. We're gonna keep our technician off. Nobody's watching. So, all right, I gotta start remembering Teddy. That's two days in a row I forgot him. So you can see here with our trunk space, when Teddy sits in a normal Seltos without this rear panel, or with this rear panel with the seat up, or with the area up, his tummy just presses up against this. Now you can see here, it's actually below. So having that floor that drops just those few inches, four inches, whatever it is, um, makes a really good trunk space, makes it really useful. So I'm a big fan of having that space because when you try to peek in, you have no clue Teddy's there. It's okay not to know America math. Americans don't know it either, says Jasmine. All right, I'm gonna take that. <laughs> see, I like quoting inches because I never learned inches in school. It's great. Um, all right, we are already over time. So we're 31 minutes, 31 and a half minutes in. I have no problem sticking around if you guys have questions. If you don't, we'll wrap it up, but I am gonna check those comments and questions now. So if there's anything you wanna ask, do me a favor and ask it now. We are well short of our goal of 40 likes. We only got to 21. I guess I didn't earn it today, uh, but feel free to ask questions. Somebody says Celtos, does it have a side step bar option? I don't believe there's a step bar option from the factory. There is usually one aftermarket. I'm not sure if you would want one. This is not a terribly high car. The ground clearance is very good for the class. I think it's, oh, I don't wanna quote the wrong number, but it is very good for the class. I remember that, uh, but I don't know that you would want it on this car. Uh, they would put it fairly low. This car is very easy to get in and out of. Uh, one thing people have always asked, they said, you used to want a sole all wheel drive. Well, this came out instead. I 100% agree, agree with this decision and that's coming from a sole owner. Why? You've got some more ground clearance here. You've also got a little bit more trunk space and it's, um, I think it gives you more than a sole would. It doesn't have as much controversial looks either. Some people don't like the sole. I quite like the sole, uh, but it gives you all the features of the sole with a little bit more space. All right, if you've never asked a question before, feel free to ask your question for the first time. Uh, if we're not live, feel free to ask it in the comment section. We can answer it there and we'll probably do other videos on it as well. Somebody said the carnival arrival, uh, we are hoping for that. It has not showed up yet. So we're gonna follow that. Um, when it comes in, uh, I was hoping this month, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, we'll have the Stinger unveil next week. Da, 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 da. Off topic question, does the Kia K5 have UVO intelligence? Yes, it does, depends on the trim level. I'm not sure if the GT line does. I feel like it might. So EX I don't think does, GT line I think does, and the um, GT does. So I could be wrong on that, but it, it is in the car. I just don't remember the trim line off the top of my head. We can ask off topic questions now. We're after the 30 minute mark. Peter, when are you coming with P Kia stickers coming? Somebody keeps asking me, when are we doing Peter from Bradford Kia stickers? We're not, I don't have a following. It's just like the three of you online, that's it. So, uh, hey, there's Tim. Tim, anything you wanna say about the Kia Seltos EX Premium? Wonderful oh, car. It's a wonderful I've car. My daughter drives one. That's true, his daughter does drive one. And my dad drives an SX Turbo. There you go. Months, so they've had them around six months now. There you go. So beautiful Tim's car. Tim sold two Seltos to his family members, so that's a good reason to have one. All right, just going through the comments, make sure there's nothing I missed. Uh, can we talk about windshield repair on the SX Turbo? How expensive can it get because of the rain sensing wipers? Okay, this is a comment that I actually dealt with this morning. So windshield repair with the rain sensing wipers. Rain sensing wipers do charge, does cost you extra for the rain sensing wipers. It's not a ton. Um, however, this car doesn't have it, but since we're off topic for a split second, some of our cars like the K5 and my Kia Soul have the little um, grid in the windshield. And we had a customer who, um, that heating grid, that tungsten element heating grid. We had a customer who broke a windshield and I got to go talk to the glass place, who's a guy I know quite well, I like him a lot. And we had an honest conversation. How much more does this tungsten element cost? And he's like, it's not a big deal. 
It's really not. It's not going to be the difference. He wouldn't give me exact, he did give me some exact rough estimates, but I don't want to quote that. Um, but he gave me some rough estimates. So some of those things that we're always going, oh, the rain sensing wipers are going to cost you a lot more, or the tungsten element in the windshield is going to cost you more to replace. They're not that much more. So don't let that be a determining factor to say, oh, I don't want that feature because if I break the windshield, it'll be a problem. Uh, he assured me it's really not as much as you think. It's something they need to know about when they're replacing the glass. Uh, there are some extra costs, a little tiny bit, uh, but it's not something that's usually going to deter people uh, from getting that. And it shouldn't deter you. It shouldn't be, don't let the sticker shock of those things uh, scare you. What a wonderful car, says someone with a Korean name and hi Canada from New Zealand. That's pretty cool. Do you think there's going to be a hybrid option of this? Short answer, no. So this car has been engineered before it came out here. It was out in other markets first. Um, I don't think this car has been engineered from the ground up to be a hybrid. I do think a refreshed model of this will definitely be a, um, a hybrid. So I don't expect to see it uh, right now. Uh, but I do think we will see stuff like that in the future. I do expect to see Sorento plug-in hybrid, Sorento hybrid. Uh, we've got Nero hybrid, Nero plug-in hybrid. Um, I think the next Sportage, which is probably about a year away, it would not surprise me if that at some point in its life cycle had a hybrid. It may not launch with the original car, um, just like the Sorento came out and it wasn't a hybrid at launch. So I think we're going to see a lot of those. I don't expect the Seltos to be one of those initially, maybe in a refresh. All right, a couple more comments came in. I'm just going to jump onto those. Great, that's the answer. I was getting scared, but we'll, okay, so we helped. Uh, bought myself those two weeks, or get myself those two weeks, it looks like. Love Sportage. Don't forget to give a like, peeps. Yeah, Jasmine said don't forget to give a like. Um, Sportage, yeah, we'll do another Sportage video soon. I've got a few ideas for tomorrow. So here we go, guys. Tomorrow, Friday. Um, I've got a couple ideas for Friday. Friday's are usually fun day, so we'll try to make it fun. Going to do another Kia class tomorrow. We just did a Kia class yesterday. If you haven't seen our Kia class, uh, some of our cars have surround view cameras. In other words, there's cameras all the way around the car. You can use those cameras to take pictures and show them on your cell phone. It's a three minute video. Go give it a watch when you're done with this. Um, you know, give me a view, maybe give me a like. It's a pretty cool feature. And uh, we do Kia classes like that twice a week. So we have another one coming up tomorrow and uh, other stuff tomorrow. So tomorrow will be fun. Uh, we got the 28 likes, didn't even hit 30. Hey, sometimes you fail. All right, thanks everybody for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, and of course, every day this week or next week, next week's a big week. We got the EV6 being unveiled worldwide. We got the Kia Stinger being unveiled in Canada. Uh, Carnival could show up at any time. The um, uh, Stinger could show up at any time. So thanks everybody for watching and have a great day. We'll talk to you all tomorrow.